Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Can you honor this great man seated here? Can you honor him? Thank God that you answered the call, sir. Thank God that you made it happen and God helped you. Thank God for your life. And thank you for giving me this platform to share. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can all of you seated in this hall today celebrate these ones graduating today? You made it. You made it. It was work to finish from a school like Colonial School of Ministry is work. Work. You made it. Day and night you made it. And today, the earnest expectation of the entire creation, they are waiting for your manifestation. I celebrate you again. You may please respectfully take your seats. I was only 19 years old when the burden for leadership development hit me. I was seated at Wolfby in Oweri, never forgetting it. And while I was seated at Wolfby, I read the book of Nehemiah. I saw for the first time going through that book, I saw how a man left the king's palace and heard his country was in shame and shamble. And the burden for transformational leadership hit him. And he began a process of going back to his country. This man called Nehemiah went to Jerusalem and began to lead a movement. And that movement led to the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem. So that touched me and I began to cry. As a young boy, the burden for leadership development hit me. And I realized that the fastest way nations make progress is when nations begin to invest in the leadership development systems of their entire citizen. Nations of the world make progress as a result of that. And so I will never forget that day. I had the honor of hosting. <laughs> I had the honor of hosting the man they called Dr. Miles Monroe in the city of Owere. And he was talking to 1,500 people seated, 2012. And he said, Linus, do you know that there are over 5,000 definitions of leadership in the world? I have studied these definitions, but the one that inspired me most is the one that I want to quote now. And he said, I quote him, he said, leadership is the ability to motivate, to inspire, guide a group of people towards a particular direction by inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. At the heart of that definition was something that struck me. For over these years, I adopted that definition because at the heart of leadership is influence. At the heart of leadership is a system of inspiration that can change nations. At the heart of leadership is a central piece called the generation of vision. Humans, they attract big vision for their lives and systems never remain the same. One human being that connects to the concept of leadership can change an entire system, one individual. And it was while I was thinking about that, that I encountered a man called Professor John Adair. John Adair is the first professor of leadership in the world, written over 80 books. 
and John Adair was visiting Nigeria, and he said that the greatest need for Africa, the greatest need for Nigeria is to groom good leaders and leaders for good. To groom good leaders and leaders for good was the greatest need. The greatest need for the nation was not material things. The greatest need for the nation was a celebration of leadership capital that is huge. When leadership capital is huge in a nation, things happen. Systems are transformed. Businesses thrive because it's everything falls and rises on leadership. And so that day, I walked into the Harvard class. We were 62 of us from all over the world. What have we come to do? We came to Harvard to discuss the future of leadership, the train of leadership. These were the very best of humans from all over. And we were 62. And while in that class, I loved data. I began to observe the numbers. 11 of them came from Australia. Some came from Canada. Some came from Singapore. They came from different parts of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, only two came from Africa. Two. Morocco, Nigeria. And I began to ask myself, why? Why? Why is it that a continent that has a huge deficit of leadership capital, that a gathering where people were thinking about how to throw, throw up measures to the future of leadership development, only two came from Africa. And then my thoughts went back to the concept of leadership capital. The concept of leadership capital balance is a system that says for you to be able to make a big difference, whether you are working for a system, whether you are a leader of a team, whether you are a leader of a church, for you to make a difference, you need at least 60% over 100 in all the leadership capital system that are represented in that graph that you must make at least, no matter how many certificates you have. So what it means is that Having certificates might not necessarily be enough to be able to generate quality leadership in a system. You might have three PhDs and you still steal public, public money. You, you might have three PhDs and use your pen to steal what? Public money. Because if your leadership deficit is, is clear to everybody, how do you make a difference? So what do you do? For everyone graduating today, you want to study that graph and say, you know what? I do not want to be Mr. Red. I want to be Mr. Green and take that Mr. Green from 60 average to 90% of 100 in my capacity to have a vision, in my capacity to have honor, in my capacity to have courage. If you are able to work that out, what it means is that sometime in the country, your name will be thrown up because of the quality of the leadership capital that you have displayed over time, because it must impact the system in ways that is unimaginable. So leadership capital balance is a solution for the African challenge called leadership. Everywhere in the world today, companies are beginning to take leadership capital seriously. Families are beginning to take leadership capital seriously. My question for you is, would you do so at this point in time? That is my question for you. And so, I began to move it from the dimension of transformational leadership a step further. Because in my own context, transformational leadership is just one of the many leadership theories that are existing today. But transformational leadership is the one that has been adopted by change makers, change agents around the world. Show me nations that were transformed. I will show you nations that had their leaders practice the leadership model that is transformational in nature. Transformational leadership, therefore, is a leadership model, is a leadership framework, 
It's a leadership approach that places premium on people inspired by a compelling vision that is strengthened by sound principles that changes the leader and as well as the followers. And when that happens, it produces a sustainable outcome that brings such a major transformation or such a major transformation in individuals, in businesses, in institutions, companies, and even nations. And so, when you see transformational leadership in practice, what it does is that everybody knows it's existing. You don't go about saying, I'm a transformational leader. The work that you have done will begin to speak. So my desire today is that each and every one of you graduating today, the marketplace will feel your impact. The marketplace does not respect six packs. Did you get that? The marketplace does not show respect to six packs. Except the six packs will enable you to provide transformational leadership in the sports sector. Because for you to be able to lead in a transformational way, what it means is that